And we're back. We're going to go with part three now. We left off right here a little bit after mile eight. You can see mile eight on the map. My run is right here. But if you look at the actual, actually right now on the on the nationwide official course, we're pretty close. Notice um, we have water and goo coming up right here. So this is a gel station. So you can take their gel. Um, you don't have to use one that you're carrying. So if you're following my plan, you got one about four and a half and one at eight. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, so you're going to run forward. You go over a little bridge. Let's check our elevation chart. I'm pretty sure right now uh, not much exciting is happening. So we're actually on a, a slight decline. Oh, I do want to point something out here in a second, so don't let me forget about that. But uh, we are on a slight decline, so we're feeling pretty good. We don't have to worry about that too much. And right here is where you're going to see um, all the names of the patients um, and I think the, the uh, children's champions get names here. Um, we're coming up on the nationwide building and really if we step back a little bit you can start to see it right about here. Um, again, this is the first kind of boring section. It's a, it's a whole quarter of a mile um, in the first half of Columbus. Um, but if you are feeling a little bit here, just you get that glimpse of nationwide and, and you remember why um, this run is so special and so important. So kind of keep that in mind and, and it'd be hard not to be inspired um, during this section because uh, that's actually something I completely forgot to mention. Every mile there's a, a child who's been selected from the nationwide um, Children's Hospital to kind of own that mile and, and be honored in that mile. Um, they'll be standing there with the little foam hands and uh, just every time you see one, take notice, let it lift you. You know, if you're really hardcore racing it, I, I, personally I'm not going to zig across the street to slap hands. Um, but if, if, if they're within reach, you know, break form for a second, reach out and slap that foam hand. It, it, it really does lift you. And right here they have a ton of people from the hospital out um, and it's just great they've really worked this section um, to be really exciting and, and it really is the big reminder of, of why we're doing this race um, so enjoy this section down Livingston it's really really cool um, one thing I did want to point out here as we come past nationwide on my Strava you can see there's a little dip right here um, I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure if my cursor's showing up on it. Is, I don't think it is, but there's a little dip right there um, that shouldn't be there. I did not veer off course or anything like that. And I actually ran this section of the course in training, and the same thing happened. So it seems like my GPS gets confused right here and has me running a little section that is not there. Um, and it really screws up your pace. So if you're running down Livingston, um, going over, I'm not quite sure what street that is. Let's see if I can zoom in and find out. Right there, right after the hospital. See how it has me veer? Same thing happened. Um, so it's right after the children's hospital. If you, um, if your GPS starts acting weird, don't panic. Trust your gut and your legs don't trust your watch because it seems like there is a GPS hiccup that's happened consistently for me at that spot so just keep that in mind alright so back on course we're going down Livingston um, I think we've passed mile 9 now let's see yep there is a water station around mile 9 so keep an eye out for that one oops and we get another awesome left turn, just like when we turned on to 18th from Broad. Just turning on to Living Third from Livingston is awesome. You're going to have people lined up here just like before. Um, if you're a half marathoner, you're starting to get towards the last section of your race. If you're on the marathon, we still got quite a ways to go. But you're entering a really special section through German Village, and they give you a nice little welcome here. Um, my cross country team a lot of times stands here. Uh, spectators like to stand at this one because you can catch them on Livingston and then just walk a few blocks and get them on high over here. So um, a lot of spectators go there and it's it's a really cool spot. So these left turns in the first half are just awesome. I don't, I don't know if they planned it out like that, but it's funny how it works. 
Um, then you're going to go down third. You're going to veer towards the left-hand side of the street as you angle. Enjoy German Village. There's some really cool shops. Um, there'll be a lot of support along here from from the residents, and uh, it's it's a really enjoy the run. It's it's beautiful. Uh, at this point, we shouldn't be feeling the heat too much. It's still early in the day, um, but we're going to be cognizant of that as we get further in the race. Let's see. Okay, we've passed mile marker 10. And we're going to take a little run around Schiller Park. I love this section. I really do. Um, you know, it's it's a solid half mile, and it seems to pass like nothing. Um, you know, it, it's cool how they can build in these little distractions that make the, the race go faster. So you're going to, um, you know, run the tangents, hug the turns. Uh, just so you know, if you're someone who likes to snag a cool picture, right here on Stewart Avenue... Again, I'm sorry, you can't see my cursor. Right here on near Stewart Avenue um, on Yeager Street is where they usually set up the um, overhead pictures. So if you like to strike a pose, go ahead and do so there. There's tons of support. It's great. Um, and you're going to pass the 11 mile marker. I think there's also a water station right here up here on Yeager. Um, so snag that one. And we're going to come down and we're going to turn right onto high. And if you're a half marathoner, um, and once you're on high, you only have a left turn to go. You've got one turn left. As a marathoner, keep that in mind. Because remember, out of the 18,000 people running Columbus, um, only four or 5,000 are um, marathoners. So they, they outnumber us uh, two to one at least, if not three to one. So look to your left, look to your right, and they're probably both half marathoners if you are running the full. Um, so keep that in mind because one of two things can happen here as they reach their final stretch, all of our half marathoning friends. One, if they're in shape and have trained right and have run the race right, they're going to start kicking. So if you feel the group you're with starting to pick up speed, don't get sucked in. I've seen it happen time after time on High Street. Do not get sucked in with the kicking half marathoners. Um, my first time running it, the section going uphill on High Street, I was 6.39, and my pace overall for the marathon was like a 7.27 or something like that. So you, you shouldn't be running a minute ahead of your overall pace um, uphill, and that was part of the reason why I died so bad. Um, the other thing that can happen is half marathoners... Um, if they haven't trained well, could be falling back here. So, because um, it's the end of their race, and if they're not trained for it, they're going to be struggling. So, if you are a full marathoner, run your race on High Street. Do not get distracted by people speeding up and slowing down around you. Check your watch often. I don't want you to check your watch too much during the race, but during this section, it's worth it to make sure you're going the right pace. Uh, let's check and see where the water stops are. There's one just after the 12 mile marker. It's on the right-hand side of the street, I believe. But we're going to go up High Street, and High Street has a bit of a climb, if I remember correctly. So we're right here. Actually, it's pretty flat, but we do hit um, a little incline, which we'll talk about in just a second. So we're going up High Street. You're heading towards downtown. It feels good. As you get closer to downtown, there's more and more support. Here's our little bump. Um, we're going to go over I-70. And there is an overpass, and this one does go on an incline to get up and over that overpass. I've felt it. It's not bad. If you're a half marathoner at the end of your race, I've heard some people say this is just like the worst thing ever. Uh, it feels like Mount Everest. It is not Mount Everest. Do not get too discouraged by it. If we look at this little guy, see, compared to what we have to face later, which we'll, we'll get to that one. This guy's just a little bump. He's nothing to worry about. Um... If we look right before that point, we are at 750 feet, and even at the top of it, we're at 771, 772. So we're looking at like a 25-foot hill. It's there. You'll feel the little incline. You know, you're going up two and a half stories of a building. So, I mean, it's, it's like going up two and a half flights of stairs. You'll feel it, but it's not bad. Don't get discouraged. Just... Um, if you're if you're hurting, just shorten your strides up a bit. Use those arms and that core. Get up and over it. We passed the 12 mile mark. We're downtown. There's tons of people cheering you on. All the people there for the half marathoners, which is the majority of the people, um, are there to cheer on their their people as they finish. 
um, it's it's just great. So don't get sucked into going too fast. Full marathoners, half marathoners, do your thing. And as we get back here to long, full marathoners, you're going to stay to the right side. Half marathoners, stay to the left side. You're going to turn left and finish. You get a nice downhill finish. Half marathoners, enjoy it. Full marathoners, we're just getting started. All right, a lot of marathoners tell me they find this part discouraging I do not personally um, I usually actually get a boost of energy because now I can see around me who's who's for real <laughs> and I'm not hating on the half marathoners you guys do your thing that's awesome but um, I see the guys um, who I'm racing with and uh, I, that feels cool I know who I'm who's going the long haul with me so I like that I feel like now I'm I'm, I'm in my race um, so we're 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 the crowd is going to thin out significantly from this point on. I know I've mentioned that there is a big difference between the first half of Columbus and the second half of Columbus, and it's crowd support. That's not to say there's no one out there for the second half. It's just there's tons of crowds and energy and bands and music. That first half is so intense, and the second half is not. <laughs> All right, And you're going to see people, but it's not going to be the same level. So have that music going, have that playlist ready to go, and uh, we're grinding. This is what we trained for. So we're going to go down North High Street. A quick little note. Um, we used to, if I zoom out for a second here, back when I first ran Columbus, we would go all the way from, um, i got to zoom out even further, from this turn onto High Street all the way up to Lane Avenue, which is just north of that 17 mile marker. We would do one giant straightaway up there, like four or five miles, uh, which was long. So props. Um, one thing, again, Darius Blackford and the um, Columbus Marathon Committee, one thing they just do an excellent job of is listening to feedback um, from their runners and, and making changes. So uh, we're going to turn down to Nationwide. Um, you get a little bit of an uphill here, actually. I don't know if it'll show up on Strava or not. Let's see if we can find it right before 13. Very slight, very slight. Just a little bump, but it's there. Um, actually, that's not quite it, is it? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. That was it right there. All right, uh, very little bump. And then you're going to be going down Front Street. You're going to go past Goodale Park. Um, Sorry, before we get to Godel Park, you do pass the half marathon point. They usually have a clock going. I do love seeing that time at the half marathon. So you can kind of see, well, double that. What am I doing right now? Um, and and uh, seems to usually, if you're in a group, which it seems I've always been lucky enough to be in a bit of one at the half marathon, there's always a little bit of camaraderie going on. Someone will yell out, we got this, guys. Or, you know, it's it's fun. Um and and the race is on now so we go down park we're going to take a right on buttles and we're back on high street so yes we are going north on high street for a while um but they've broken it up with these little turns and stuff they're going to take us through campus um and it's it's not it doesn't feel like a long boring straightaway it, it's pretty um active uh, i haven't checked in on water stops in a while uh you get one around 13 um, so just know that on Nationwide, I think it's just after you turn on to Nationwide. I can't quite remember, but somewhere around there, there is a water stop. So don't miss that one around the halfway point. I would probably gel up around there considering the last one was, um, yeah, actually looking at this, I would definitely use that to gel up. Uh, the last one you took was mile eight. And like I said, every five miles or so, well, we're at mile 13 and there's not another water stop until 15 and a half actually so we're gonna go a while without any water so now would be a good time to take a gel so note to self take that gel around mile 13 looks like I'm coming up on my 15 minute mark so we will take uh, we will pick back up part four um, right here on high street and this is this is gonna be the challenging part of the marathon